All right, what's going on? This is Pete, and uh, we're over at SWRNC Southwest Rod and Custom. Now, we just had a customer come over here, and he just dropped off a vintage 1964 Volkswagen Carmen Ghia. Now, this is a very rare car, and uh, it's actually in pretty good shape. Let's take a look at this car real quick. He uh, basically went, and I'm going to be honest with you, he fucked his car up. But it's fixable. It's a fixable fucked up car. And the reason it's fucked up because he had a sandblasted, okay? My friend Pete's always trying to tell you, don't sandblast your cars. Now, he says it was glass bead sanded, but let's really think about this, okay? Glass is made out of sand. Plain and fucking simple. But uh, let's go talk to the owner. Let's see what his angle is. Let's see what his fucking plans are on the 1964 vintage Volkswagen classic Carmen Ghia. And then we're going to tell him what my friend Pete thinks he ought to do. Because I think he has a different idea. What do you got, James? You got a 1964 Carmen Ghia, bud. What's going on with your car and what do you want to do to it? Besides all the rust repair and all the fucking shit going on with it, bud. I just want to... What's get... your plan on the car, dude? I just want to... What get... are you trying to do to it? That's what I'm asking. Are you trying to customize it? Do you want to weld all the holes up? Do you want to make it look like a cow look fucking Volkswagen? Or are we going classic original, James? More classic original. But you said Camaro orange, dude. That's not classic original. Yeah. Okay. Have you ever done paint body yourself, James? Are you a paint body guy? I'm not a paint body professionally, but I've right. done it. I've because done. we were sitting here talking and you're doing all the body work to your car. Yeah. Am I right? Uh -huh. So you're confident with yourself to shape that car in to do all the body work by yourself and do it right? Yeah. And how long have you been doing paint body? I taught it in college for yeah. years. Yeah. And you, you fly airplanes as well? Yeah. Now are those real airplanes or toy airplanes? What kind of airplane you got, Joe? I got an RV-7. What is that? It's a kit-built airplane that I built. Oh, that's why you have the airplane hanger? Now, how long does it take to build a plane like that? It took me 1,200 hours over a period of a year and a half. God, dude. How big is that airplane? Is it longer than my office? No. It's got about a 22-foot wingspan. Oh. Seats two people. Cruises. Cruises about 170 miles an hour. How high does it go? Like they say you can get like 22,000 feet in it, but unless you're an instrument rated pilot, you can't fly over 18,000 feet. I'd like to have one of them little hang gliders, you know, the ones you sit in. Yeah. Those ones you sit in, it's, it's like a hang glider that's got a motor on the back of it. Yeah. What are those? Those are trike. They're called trike? Yeah. Are those dangerous? Not real, I mean, you know, but. Kind of, Some low, of them are pretty expensive. For they're low flyers are. though, right? You can't yeah, get real high. Don't I mean. get real high. Yeah. Some of them are pretty expensive. Like a day, a day like today where it's pretty windy, you definitely don't want to get flying. Yeah, we'll be out there. Yeah. Let's go out there and look at your car. Okay, dude? All right. All right, James. Go ahead and tell us some history on your car, dude. What, what are we looking at here? What exactly is this, dude? It's a uh, 1964 Carmen Ghia uh -huh. that I bought from a friend of mine that worked where I used to about... 10 years ago. So I bought the car from him because he was having to get rid of it when I bought it. It had no engine in it. Everything was pretty much there, but it wasn't running. And then I bought an engine. What kind of engine are you getting putting in it? It's got a 1600 cc. Is it a dual port or single port? Single port. Okay, you're putting a single port 1600 in it with uh, the stock transmission? Yeah. Okay, you know that that's a 12 volt flywheel transmission, I mean, a 6 volt flywheel transmission. Right. What are you going to do to fix that, James? I hadn't thought about that far okay. yet. I want to make it a 12 volt system. Right. Do you know that that's uh, magnesium? The case on that's made out of magnesium. Yeah. Do you yeah. know what happens when you grind the magnesium since you're an airplane guy? Yeah, it burns really It'll good. explode, dude. Yeah. Yes. Just like aluminum. Be very fucking careful, bud. Yep. Okay, we don't want to see you blow yourself up and your hair start on fire and your face yeah. get fucking burned. And, okay. 
And just to let everybody out there know that uh, 64 Volkswagen, Carmen, Gias, Bugs, whatever, those were six volt systems, okay? So James is planning on converting his car over to a 12 volt. So either he's gonna have to put a 1967 or later transmis transaxle in it, or he's gonna have to grind out the case for the 12 volt flywheel to fit. Plain and simple. You see what I'm saying? Right. Does that make sense to you? Right, makes sense. Because you're an airplane mechanic, right? Well, yeah. Well, you're a precise guy. Yeah. yeah. I mean, to build an airplane takes a lot more fucking precision than fucking with a Carmen Ghia, bud. Come on. Yeah. yeah. All right. I mean, if you're talking about going up in the fucking air here, how, how far? 18,000 feet. 18,000 feet versus, you know, four wheels on the fucking ground here, James. And Come if something on. happens, you coast to a stop. So you're a machine guy. You're a machinist guy. Yeah. You're a precise machinist guy that down to the milligrams and millimeters of what sizes fit what. Yep. Is that where you got machine equipment? Do I, do all know, that I, I, I do it at my present job right now. Yeah. If I built that airplane, it would probably take 2,000 hours because I'd be scared of this and I'd have to go over it three or four times to make sure it was properly put. Right. My friend Pete says to go ahead and make this look like a brand new Volkswagen from 1964 using antique vintage 1960 colors. That means solid paint. That doesn't mean pearl paint. Okay. My friend Pete says to put all the fucking chrome back on it. You know. Put all the chrome, you get uh, the original style interior, okay? When you put your motor in it, don't put chrome on the engine, okay? Paint it black to look like an original fucking car. And my friend Pete says to lower the thing down a little bit, drop it down, give it that cow look, because that's gonna be more desirable to the public in case you get no jam and you have to sell your car. And it's also gonna save you a lot of money. Yeah. Believe it or not. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. What do you think of that, James? Sounds good. Does that sound good? Sounds good. And I can always. I think I'd take the Camaro orange and throw it in the fucking trash, dude. Yeah. I don't think I'd go with that. Well, I'm just trying to think something. But that's a color. Me. That's a color. Yeah. I, I would go. Color I would actually. The, on it wasn't too bad. It was kind of what, the blue. What color was it? It was a that baby kind of blue. a baby blue with a white top on it. Oh, okay. So it was a two tone. Two tone. Now I don't know if that was that factory was, two tone. Okay, that was probably original. If you look right in here, so you can see the aqua blue in there. Uh -huh. See that aqua blue yeah. sitting in there? That's original. That's the original color, okay? My personal opinion, I would probably go with the original colors that this car actually was, dude, because, due to the fact it's a 1964. We got a guy out there, his name's Volkswagen Steve. I don't know if you ever seen any videos with Volkswagen Steve. Oh, few. He spent $33,000 on his car, McGee. He went a little fucking wacko on his, bud, okay? What's your budget on something like this, James? Tell everybody what you're gonna do with it so you don't get stuck with a fucking money pit and get it stuck in your fucking ass because, you know, you want everything and everything but the sky in there, dude. What, what are you going to do? Well, hopefully, by the time I've said it done, hopefully I'll have somewhere about $10,000 in it. And that's probably the average cost of restoring an old car like this, an old Carmen Ghia, with all brand new rubber, a nice clean engine, a nice vintage interior. Are you going with the original seats and all that, James? Close as I can get if I can find them. Okay, but I want, okay. I want something that's going to be a driver. Right. There you go. I'm now you're hang, fucking talking, right? You'll know what I'm talking about because I don't want a hanger queen or a trailer queen. There you go. You don't want a trailer queen. You don't want an airplane hanger queen. You don't want to park it next to your airplane and, you know, look at it. You want to drive the motherfucker down the road and have fun with it. Am I right? That's it. And that's what this is all about because if you're going to restore your fucking car in a day and age like this, the economy, well, the way it sucks, why are you going to spend thirty fucking thousand dollars on a car that you might be able to sell for fifteen? The only thing that you got going on your side about this little car, dude, I'm going to be honest with you, is that it's a 1964. If this was a 1970 or a 69 or 73, I would tell you, look, dude, I would spend at least as money as possible on it. You see what I'm saying? So basically, what we're going to do at my friend Pete's place over here at SWRC, we're going to go ahead and replace all the floors. You got full floor pans. Okay, we talked about fixing it you know, without taking the pad off, but it's obvious we're going to have to take the body off because these floors are rotted beyond fixing inside the car, okay? We also got a little bit of rust over here on these corners, which is down here. I guess there's some rust over here. I can't see it at this angle. We got rocker panel rust, and uh, that's basically it. I mean, we looked over your car, dude. It's actually a pretty fucking clean car, James. I'm looking up in your uh, fender well here, and I see that your fender wells are very, very clean, dude. When you're buying a car like this, okay, and this is for everybody out there that wants to, you know, maybe might want to buy a Carmen Ghia. 
it's always good to look at the fender wells, okay? And take yourself a screwdriver and chip that fucking, chip a little piece off to see what kind of finish is under there. You see what I'm saying, James? Right, right. Okay, that's always going to take. I noticed in this fender well right here, this is where a lot of Carmen Gia's rust out. If you look down in there, yours looks like brand fucking new, dude. What was your cost buying this car from the second owner guy? Without the engine, cost me $400. $400. You are one lucky bastard. That is dirt fucking cheap. So you think I got a good deal? Do you think you got a good deal? Everybody that watched this video says you got a good fucking deal, dude. What? $400 for a 1964 Carmen Ghia complete less motor? So it looks like James, uh, you know, got lucky. He. He threw the dice, he spent his $400, and he got himself a nice, clean automobile. It's a vintage, classic automobile. I wouldn't customize it. I wouldn't put the pearl paint jobs and the ghost flames and the stripes and all this shit. I would bring it back to the classic, original style that this car represents, the 1964 Volkswagen Carmen Ghia, and let it go from there. Uh, I would probably lower it. I might go ahead and add disc brakes on the front end, and uh, possibly, for sure, converted over to 12 volt. My friend Pete would change the transaxle out. I wouldn't leave the 64 transaxle in due to the gear ratio and the shifting problems that you have that will occur doing all that. Okay, because the gears in first gear, I believe up to 64, uh, the gears on first gear aren't synchronized, so you basically have to come to a complete stop before you can put it back in first gear. This is Pete, my friend Pete, your friend Pete, showing you the Volkswagens of the era and what the fuck's going on and how to do it right. Take it easy. We'll see you later. Is there anything else you got to say before we go, James? No. Nope. Any advice for anybody out there that's going to buy a Volkswagen and restore a car? Anything? Just take your time and don't get in a hurry before you buy one. And you forgot the most important part. Don't make a trailer queen. No, that's it. There you go, bud. Take don't it. overdo it. Don't overkill. There you go. You know that from airplanes, right? That's it. All right, the airplane guy, James, We'll see you on the next trip, bud. Take All it right. easy. Have a good one. All right.